All right, so I did a thing, and I really wanted to determine who the best Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord Shock Troop was in the game. I did this using some obnoxious amount of math and detail that's probably way over the top, but it's almost comical how much there is, and I kind of wanted to figure out, see if I could figure out, um, you know, through math and statistics, uh, who would be the number one shock troop. So let's get into it. So what defines a shock troop for these metrics? Um, basically shock troops are troops that are used for breaking infantry shield walls. Um, they generally don't use a shield themselves. They fight on foot for these uh, parameters. Um, they excel at hand-to-hand -hand combat. They excel at close combat. Those are kind of similar things, but not always the same. They're able to absorb a moderate level of ranged fire before reaching the front lines and would not be considered a faction's main infantry. I do have one exception on this list, and that's the Kuzates, who do not have a shock type unit in their tree or even in their secondary units um, so I will be using the dark hand which is the main infantry of the Kuzates and I had to give it some penalties to make up for that um, which I will explain later so what advanced metrics am I using to determine uh, the viability of each of these shock units um, I use these three following statistical metrics that I created. Um, first being effective shock stats. Second being armor rating to rate, weight ratio, including arms. So including the weapons that the unit comes with. And then a shock DPS rating. So the effective shock stat, what goes into this? Um, these stats are calculated with the following. They are statistics that the unit actually use are added together with the following modifiers to wait for shock skills. So basically takes into account um, stats, uh, the stats of the unit itself, and then the ones that it actually uses because it has weapons to utilize them. And then I have modifiers for shock. So the modifiers being 1.5 bonus damage to the main shock weapon. So it determines which weapon would be the most effective in a shock situation and gives a 1.5 damage bonus or bonus to that weapon. And then if the unit uses a one-handed sword, it gets a 1.25x bonus, 1.5x for pole arms, 1.75x for two-handed swords, and 2x for two-handed axes. Um, Basically, this is because um, these are the metrics that I've determined that these, that's kind of the ascending order of effective weapons for shock troops, um, with two-handed axes being the most effective of the ones on this list, and one-handed swords being the least effective. Um, athletics is also a, another bonus, another um, multiplier, um, because, and, and that's a, at a 1.5x bonus, so uh, athletic stats are weighted more heavily than some other stats because as a shock infantry, movement speed uh, is very important and athletics also allows you to move faster in heavier armor. Um, and I've determined that that is more important uh, to be weighted than secondary stats like throwing for shock infantry specifically. And as I stated before, the Kuzate Dark Hand did not receive any main shock well, actually, I didn't, I didn't mention this before, but I'll mention it now. The big uh, knock that I gave the Kuzay Darkhan, because um, they are not actual shock infantry, um, is that they did not receive a main shock weapon bonus as they are infantry unit, um, and but they were all that was available. So they do not receive that 1.5x bonus, but they do receive a weapon bonus. And a quick uh, example of how the shock stat calculation is is um, right there as you can see an example um, it's basically just a sum and then it adds all of those stats up with the modifiers included
So armor rating to rate ratio with arms. So this is our second advanced metric. Um, and it's a fairly straightforward statistic that takes into account the armor rating of each soldier and creates a ratio to the weight. Um, weight determines movement speed along with the athletics. So the lighter weight is a benefit for shock troops. Um, pretty big benefit, honestly. Um, so effective shock armor rating is determined, which is one of the uh, factors that goes into the calculation is determined by adding the armor of each body part together adding a 25% bonus for head and body armor. So it's an extra weight on the head and body armor. Um, as they're more important, they, you know, they cover more important areas and the body armor covers a larger area than say the arms or the legs. And there's an example of that calculation there. Um, weight with arms. So this is, um, is determined by adding all of the weights of the gear the soldier has, including the weapons that it, it comes with naturally. So basically the total weight of the whole kit. Um, but throwing weapon weights, I only added half of the total weight of all of the throwing weapons because at some point they're going to throw those weapons, um, ideally. So counting them as their full weight at all times would not be accurate. Um, and then the final armor rating to weight ratio with arms, um, which is this entire metric is determined by taking the effective shock armor rating and divide it, dividing it by the weight with arms uh, number. Um, shock DPS rating is our third <coughs> um, advanced statistic. And this, this statistic is determined by identifying which weapon that is available to the soldier that would be the most effective in shock troop situations. Um, and the weapon's final DPS is weighed with the following modifiers to account for more or less effective shock weapons. Once again, um, 1.25x for one-handed swords, 1.5x for pole arms, 1.25x for two-handed swords, and 2x for uh, two-handed axes. Um, an example calculation for shock DPS rating would be the following, you know, it's the sum of basically um, its swing speed and its damage um, divided by 100 times its modifier. So the first unit we're going to look at is the Volandian Volgier. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And obviously he would be the closest shock equivalent for Volandia. Um, as you can see right there, those are the breakdowns of his stats. The highlighted numbers are the ones that he utilizes with his kit. And you can see down the bottom, his effective shock stat is 907.5. His armor rating to weight ratio with arms is 7.01. His shock DPS rating is 185.3. Next up, we have the Imperial Elite Manavliaton, and he is the closest uh, to a shock unit that the Empire has. His effective shock stats are 762.5. His armor rate rating to weight ratio with arms is 6.97. His shock DPS rating is 75.65. And for Batania here, we have the Batanian veteran Falksman, which is interesting because he does not use a Falx. <laughs> he actually uses a polearm. So interesting name, but his effective shock stats are 705. His armor rating to rate ratio with arms is 5.98. His shock DPS rating is 160.74. Next up, we have the Sturgeon Heroic Line Breaker for Sturgia. His effective shock stats are 960. His armor rating to weight ratio with arms is 9.55. And his shock DPS rating is 198.36. For the Asurai, we have the Mamaluk Palace Guard. His effective shock stats are nine or 795, sorry. His armor rating to weight ratio 
with arms is 8.12 and his shock DPS rating is 191.88. Last but not least, we have this caveat, which is the Kuzate Darkhan. This is more of an infantry unit. Um, so I do have that note that is not really a shock troop. Um, so it did not receive shock weapon bonus. The effective shock stats for the Kuzate Darkhan are 547.5. His effective armor rating to rate ratio with arms is 6.74. And his shock DPS rating is 79.55. So in the end, we look at our final rankings. So when you look at this graph, or chart, sorry, you can see the Sturgeon Heroic Linebreaker is number one in every single category. So he is definitely the number one most effective shock troop by my calculations in the game. Number two being the Asurai Mamaluke Palace Guard. Number three actually coming in the Volandian Volger. Volger? Volger? I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then number four being the Imperial Elite Manavliaton. Number five being the Batanian Veteran Falksman. And then no surprise, the non-shock troop in the Kuze Darkhan comes in sixth place. The, as you can see, the veteran Volger, some of the more interesting stats here, he kind of got bumped up to three. Um, well, actually, he was already in three, but his effective shock stats is actually number two. So he actually has better effective shock stats than the Palace Mamaluke Guard. That is because he actually comes with a two-handed sword that has really high DPS. Um, he also has a number of different weapons at his disposal, including a polearm um, and I believe throwing weapons as well. So he has a lot of different uh, weapons at his disposal and uh, options on the battlefield. Um, another interesting stat you will see is that the Vitanian veteran Falksman uh, actually has the worst armor to weight ratio with arms um, of all of these characters and the second worst effective shock stats. Um, so overall, the veteran Falksman I find very uh, underwhelming at its job. I'm not exactly sure what its job's supposed to be. He doesn't have any sort of two-handed weapon. He doesn't have a Falks. He just has a pole arm and some throwing weapons. Um, and his armor is also not great. It's actually quite bad, especially for the weight. So he's puzzling. Um, I think that unit is actually just very bad, um, to be perfectly honest. Um, the Kuze Darkhan actually has incredibly good armor. I think in raw stats, it has the highest armor of all of these units. But the caveat being, it's very, very heavy armor. Um, and he doesn't have the highest um, athletic stat. The Sturgeon Heroic Linebreaker has a higher athletic stat. So with all that in consideration, his armor, his weight ratio to um, the armor rating is actually not as good as you would think, although he has a really high armor uh, by default. So yeah, that's basically the breakdown. Um, I'm sure people will have... Uh, some concerns with the breakdown, but this is how I personally felt would be best to judge uh, shock troops. Um, you know, kind of mixing that line between DPS and movement and um, their ability to basically uh, get to a front line and make as much havoc as possible. Um, as you can imagine, all of these stats took a little while to make, so. If you enjoyed, I would appreciate if you liked and shared the video, um, as well as subscribe if you like this kind of content. It, like, let me know, and uh, I can do breakdowns of other troop lines as well. So, thank you very much.